Hello, everybody. So, uh, as I mentioned in class today, I'm going to go through a, another question that's very similar to the one we did in class, just to give you another uh, example about how we're going to approach this probability with the normal distribution here. So this one, as opposed to the uh, diastolic blood pressure, is about uh, shoe sizes. So in the United States, the uh, mean women's shoe size is 8. Also, I can go ahead and put that right in the middle there, with a standard de deviation of 1.5. So I'm not going to uh, get perfect answers here, but they're not too bad. So I can add one and a half to go this way, so, and then 11 and 12.5. Okay. And then I want to subtract to go the other way, so 6.5, 5, and 3.5. Um, so we fill in that part and fill in each box represents an area under the normal curve with the probability that a randomly selected woman in the United States has a shoe size in that region of the graph. Uh, so this would be a little bit different than uh, the way we looked at the first one because instead of numbers, like in the first one we had, they, we knew there were 40,000 people, so we just broke that apart. Uh, this one, they just want the... Um, probability. So it actually is a little bit easier. It saves us one step. So uh, we know this middle part is 68%, right? So when I divide that in half, I have 34% here and 34% here. Or if you leave them as decimals, that's perfectly fine too. It doesn't really matter all that much on that front. Okay, um, then... For these ones, it's using the same oh, sorry, using the same logic that we used uh, when we did set up the other one, I know between these two, this should cover 95% of my graph, but I already counted for that 68, so I can subtract 95 minus 68, get 27, divide that by 2, and I get 13.5%. And then, once again, just working my way out. So this is 95%. One more would be 99.7. So okay. So I get 4.7. Divide that in half, and I get 2.35%. And then my last one, remember that's that minuscule 0.3%. Um, uh, so I get 0.15% uh, over there. So once again, just running through what this means for us, though, is there if um, there's a 34% chance if I pick a uh, random woman and ask her her shoe size, it will be in this range. But um, so it'll be between six and a half and eight. But if I'm looking over here for some reason, um, there is a 0.15% chance, very, very small chance that she's going to tell me that her shoe size is less than three and a half. Okay, so that's how, how we're reading these percents here. All right, moving right along. What is the probability that a randomly selected woman in the United States has a shoe size between six and a half and eight? Oh, I'm sorry, I sort of, sort of mentioned that already. Um, so that's we're looking between six and a half and eight. That's one block here, so that's an even thirty-four percent. Explain how you determined your answer. Um, you can walk through and you're like, well, the whole thing was sixty-eight, so we divided in half. However, you want to explain that. All right, uh, moving down. What is the probability that a randomly selected woman in the United States has a shoe size less than 6.5%? Okay, so in this case, I'm not looking for a specific range per se as much as just less than 6.5%. So I'm ignoring everything on the larger side and just adding up all my other numbers. So I have 13.5% plus 2.35% plus 0.15%. And that'll give me my total probability. So 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 
0.15 gives me an even 16 percent. That one comes out very nicely. Okay, so there's a 16 percent chance their shoe size is less than 6.5 percent. Okay, move down here. All right, what is the probability that a randomly selected woman in the United States has a shoe size greater than 6.5 percent? So you have two options on this one. You can either add up all five of these numbers, and you, that would work, or since I just found what's the probability is less than 6.5%, the probability that they have a shoe size is, in this idea, is 100%. So I can simply find the complement and say, well, it's 100% minus that 16% that their shoe size is smaller, and that'll give me this size that's greater. Um, for the purposes of this, we are assuming that the uh, chances of it getting exactly 6.5% doesn't exist. But that is a common assumption with this type of breakdown. So I can just do 100 minus 16, and that'll give you my 84% that their shoe size is bigger. Once again, if you add all of these up, you should get the same thing. Um, and you, you will. So you have two ways you can approach that since you already found the complement of it. Alrighty. Um, okay, sorry, I misplaced my other paper. So we have two more questions on the next page. So using that same data, what's the probability that a randomly selected woman in the United States has a shoe size between nine and a half and 11? So that's looking from here to here. So that's 13.5%. And once again, to explain this one, you can just talk about uh, how we filled out this table. So well, you know it's 95, but we subtracted off that 68 and do that way. Or if you say the table's already filled out, you can say that um, between 9.5 and, and 11, we know it's 95, so you subtract off those three. However you want to do it. We found this one, so it's symmetrical. There's a there's a lot of ways you can you can describe this one, so that's up to you how you want to explain that. But it's from the table, so we'd have to explain how we filled out our our, our pictograph, I guess, not really table. All right, now let's pull this down so make sure we can see this. Is it more like? are more likely to randomly select a woman in the United States with a shoe size greater than 12 and a half or less than five? Justify your answer. So if we look at this, greater than 12 and a half is way off over here. So that's 0.15% for greater than 12.5 and less than five, less than five, looking over here is adding these two together. So I'm gonna have 2.35% plus the 0.15% for a total of 2.5%. So which one's more likely? The 2.5% or the 0.15%? So less than five is more likely because it has a higher probability when you add those up. So it's just making sure you can read the graph and see what you're looking at there. So that's how you would approach these ones and how you work through those.